Hello, my name is Ernest Morrell, and I'm on the faculty of the University of Notre Dame. And recently, for the Journal of Literacy Research, I wrote a piece entitled Toward Equity and Diversity in Literacy, Research, Policy, and Practice, a Critical Global Approach. Can growing inequities between rich and poor and massive manifestations of hatred and intolerance amidst rising tides of global populism inspire a focus on equity and diversity in literacy research policy and practice? Can these calls for change be collaborative rather than competitive? Can we envision self-love, wellness, and intercultural understanding as compelling ends of a reimagined literacy pedagogy? With these questions in mind, my essay offers three imperatives that really undergird the work. The first is the demographic imperative, and I argue that rapidly changing demographics should serve as a wake-up call to our new domestic and global realities. Since the 2013-2014 academic year, the U.S. public school system has been composed of a majority of students of color, and the U.S. Census Bureau projects that by 2043 there will be no ethnic majority in the country. Um, globally, UNICEF projects that by 2050, nearly one in three births and one in three children under 18 will be born on the continent of Africa. These new realities in our school system and our world make it difficult for us to even use words like diversity or minority anymore. The second is the moral imperative. Um, I argue in the paper that we have an ethical and a moral imperative to ensure that every student receives a humanizing, impactful literacy education. We also have a moral imperative that every student's literacy education increase his or her capacity for intercultural understanding. This approach isn't just intended for a quote-unquote historically marginalized population. We need to think differently about literacy education for every child. The third imperative is the economic imperative, and I argue that uh, you know families are concerned about the material well-being of their children and their grandchildren, and a powerful literacy education should help them to be more uh, materially efficacious in the world. Uh, I then talk about five big ideas that are related to this critical global approach. First, we must ask different questions. Second, we must identify and problematize our notions of success. Third, we must advocate for the equitable distribution of material resources. Fourth, uh, I argue that we need to fight for a bottom-up accountability practice. And then, you know, we need to envision a new literacy practice that reflects our global reality in our classrooms. Um, I end the paper by advocating for a global post-colonial critical literacies framework where students have the opportunity to collaboratively produce uh, and distribute their multimodal compositions, where teachers are positioned as intellectuals and agents of change, where children have access to a wider array of literary texts that enable them to become powerful and reflexive readers of the word and the world, and where parents and communities are partners in the project of nurturing powerful readers, writers, authors, and speakers.